welcome to the Bottled Imp. My name is Ken Boyter, and today we've got a bit of a special episode. It's an Imp Plays, and today it's Imp Plays Talisman, the digital edition. It's a bit of an Imp Extra, if you will, and this is based on the Talisman board game by Fantasy Flight um, that came out all 15, 20 years ago, maybe now. The original was by work, uh, Games Workshop, so. We're going to take a look at the digital game, and this is by Nomad Games. Um, uh, we've done uh, a review of the base game for the board game and the expansions. Well, uh, quite a few of the expansions. There are quite a lot. Um, you can check them out on our YouTube channel. Some of you left comments about, are you going to be checking out the digital edition? And the answer is yes. We will be doing a review of as well, a full review for our Friday show of this. And we're probably going to be comparing the difference between the, the board game and the uh, computer version. So look out for the full review. It, obviously you don't have to, but you can enjoy our playthrough and join us on our quest to conquer the land of Talisman. Now I'm going to be doing a single player game, so I'll be playing against three other uh, players, but they'll be computer. Um, you can actually join your friends online, you can have up to three players online, or four players, sorry, so it's you and three other players. And for me, that's probably going to be the best way to play it, because for Talisman, when we played it, it's more about the banter. Well, not more about the banter, it's about banter and claiming the crown of command for yourself. So, without me rambling on too much, let's explore the realms of Talisman. I've given it a big build up there, I'm just going to press start. Okay, let's find out. Oh, here we go. Talisman Digital Edition. Click on play. New game. And here we have an opening screen. Now, I don't know, these rune stones, I think they're part of the expansions that you can buy. Now, I've not bought any uh, of the expansions. I've just got the base game here, so they won't be in use. So if you see that, just ignore that. Here we are, there's Bottle Dimp, there's me, looking good, a random, nice balaclava I'm wearing, well we're all wearing bal balaclavas. Now you can click onto this, I already had a quick look at the opening menu and as you can see here the classic rules of Talisman require all players to begin with a random character, but you can actually click to choose which character you want to be, so the ones that are in colour there from the base game. Um, you've got a troll, look at the troll, look at his fierce face. You've got a minstrel, <laughs> don't knock the minstrel, he's more powerful than he looks. And you've also got here, this is the expansions that have come out, so you can choose from those if you've obviously bought the expansions. But strangely enough, it's allowing the pirate and the ninja, nice purple outfit the ninja has, um, it's allowing them to be included in the base game. Now I didn't know, but this is new to the digital one. Uh, pirates, hey, what's going on? So we're going to choose, yes, we are going to keep them all random. So without further ado, let's start the game. Here we are. So what we've got going on here, hang on, what's going on? Right, we've got two pirates. There's me, the bottled imp. And then we've got my twin brother. Long lost twin brother, Stan, Stan the pirate. Um, in the uh, for the board game, okay, this is interesting. With the board game, you can't actually have two characters the same unless you've bought another board game, uh, you know, another base game. But yeah, you'd normally only have one of each character. So if you've never played Talisman before, let me explain very briefly what you have to do. The object of the game is to get to the middle space here where the crown is and claim the crown of command. And what you need to do is you need to get a talisman along the way. So if we click, there we go, on the Warlock's Cave, this is where you can get a talisman. There are a few other ways you can get them from the adventure deck, um, but this one is an obvious way to get a talisman so you basically just try to get to the warlock's cave you roll a die and then you follow the quest so rolling a six you just have to discard two gold wow that's cheap isn't it talismans are cheap these days um, now you need the talisman because you need to get through this square here 
which is the Valley of Fire, and the talisman is magical, obviously, and that will protect you against the fire. And then you can climb the spiral staircase. And then once you get to the Crown of Command, you just cast command spells and try to kill off everybody else. If nobody is on the Crown of Command spell and you actually lose all your lives, because we each get lives for... Oh, the warrior starts with five. If no one's actually on the Crown of Command and you lose all your lives, you can actually respawn and become another character. So that's quite fun. So sometimes games, well, when I say sometimes, all the time, games t can take hours to play. But that's part of the fun, especially if you've got all the expansions. It can take a day. <laughs> But as I say, it's all about the banter. So I think what we'll do is we'll have a quick look at the characters. Oh, here we are. There's me with a peg leg and uh, yeah, full pirate kit. Let's click on that. So each character does have its own special abilities. So let's go through these sets of figures first. So you get strength, craft, lives, fate, gold. The strength, I have four. That's your fighting capability. Craft, that's your intellect basically, so I'm uh, not necessarily a very clever pirate at the moment. And that also determines your magic basically, your capability of casting spells. Lives, obviously, as I say, if you lose all your lives and no one's on the crown of command, you can respawn. You can also heal up to lives, there's various different ways you can heal up. Fate, fate is to do with re-rolling the die, so if you roll the die in any situation and you didn't like the result you could re-roll it by paying a fate and then you have to accept the the outcome of that second roll that can be quite handy and gold yeah gold is obviously what you do to buy stuff what you hand over so let's have a look at the special abilities whenever another he's got a lot whenever another character gambles and loses a gold in the tavern it is given directly to you to add to your plunder, that's always good. Whenever you visit the tavern, you may still... Oh, it's all happening in the tavern, naturally. You may sell any of your objects or followers. <laughs> that's your slavery, isn't it? Followers on the black market, instead of resolving the instructions on the space, discard the chosen cards and gain one gold for each. Brilliant. Whenever you encounter a stranger, now there are various different cards, adventure cards, and strangers crop up in those. You may immediately press gang. <laughs> it is slavery. Yeah, I am playing a character that is into slavery. Immediately press gang them into your crew and take them as a follower, and then you can presumably go and sell them. The press gang stranger will add three to your strength in battle, after which they depart to the discard pile. That's pretty cool. So obviously I've got a strength four. If I had a press gang stranger, I would have seven as a starting strength to fight with. You may only do that once, okay, once per stranger per battle. When you lose a life in battle, you may discard one of your press gang strangers to prevent the loss of life. That's pretty good. So they obviously took the, took the hit for you. Whenever you roll a six for your move, you may sail across the Storm River as if you were using it as a rock. That's very good because I'll go through the board in a second, but sometimes it can be quite tricky to get from the outer region to the uh, middle region, especially when you start off. We start in the tavern like everybody else by the looks of it and I am evil now alignment there's three types is good neutral and evil and each character has is assigned one of those you can change your alignment sometimes a spell might be cast on you and you have no choice sometimes a stranger may offer to you know if you pay them a gold you could choose you know change your alignment that kind of thing so that can vary throughout the game so there we are I'm pretty pleased with being a pirate I like his get up look at it looking pretty chic so obviously there's another pirate, Stan, the twin. Let's have a look at the warrior. Now the warrior, yeah, he's going to be pretty strong, isn't he? And he's strength four, craft two, yeah, the same as the pirate. Five lives, so a bit extra there, but he's only got one fate and one gold. Special abilities, there's not a lot going on here. <laughs> you may roll two dice in battle and use the higher attack roll to determine your attack score. You may two, use two weapons at the same time, that's pretty cool. You can normally only use one weapon unless it says otherwise. And weapons generally add to your strength. He can use two. So look, he's got a little bent dagger by the looks of it and a sword. It's not a very heroic pose, that is it, the warrior. I've always thought that. It does look a little bit, bit weedy. Looks like he's in trouble. Okay. 
So, uh, the Sorceress, now she's pretty good. She only starts off with strength two, but look at her craft, it's four. I think she starts, yeah, there we go, we can go through that. Let's see various cards that you have. She starts with one spell. Um, let's double check, there we go. So four lives, three fate, one gold. Her special abilities are pretty good. You gain, begin the game with one spell. When you attack another character, you may choose to make it as yeah, psychic combat. You may you may not do this when you're attacked by another character. So if you land on another character, you can choose to attack them, and you can do it normally. The, the default is that you would attack through strength, but her special ability says you can attack through craft. Uh, so they call it psychic combat if it's through craft. You may attempt to beguile a character that you land on, allowing you to take one gold or one object of your choice. To do so, roll one die, you must roll a six to beguile a good character, five or six for a neutral character, or four, five or six for an evil character. Okay, that's pretty cool. So you can take a gold or object, because normally if you wanted to take a gold or object, you would have to fight them, and then instead of asking them, you know, not asking them, instead of taking one of their lives, or let they would lose a life, you don't actually get the life, but they would lose a life. You can also take a golden object, but here she can just come in beguile without even attacking. You may take any one follower except the maiden, unicorn and princess from any character that you land on. That's pretty good. Followers are very good. They, they add to your strength and craft and give you extra perks as well. Graveyard, she starts being evil. That's probably a natural choice, although I'm sure she... She would hang out in the tavern with the rest of us. <laughs> Look at that. It's like a motley crew over there. So let's go through some of the cards. So here we have the adventure deck. And it says there's 106 in the base game. And basically what you do is when you uh, move, it's basically you roll a die and you move. Most squares on the outer region say draw one card, you draw an adventure card. There's various things, there's, as I say, there's stranger, there's objects in there, magic objects, there's events that happen, and there's obviously enemies, monsters to attack. Spell deck, that's where you get your spells from. There's various different types of spells. At the moment, the sorceress is the only one with a spell. There's a purchase deck, and that's where you can buy weapons and various things. You can buy a sword, an axe, a water bottle, a mule, because everybody can only start off carrying four objects. Gold doesn't count as objects. So if you buy a mule, you can carry an extra four objects, so a mule's pretty cool. And you can buy a raft there as well. What's that? Oh, that's the talisman deck. There we are. So yes, the fabled talisman. So there are enough for everyone to go around to begin with. There is an alternate rule that you can play where you you can only, you put one talisman out and that's it. So once the talisman's, talisman has been taken by that player, everyone then has to wrestle that player for the talisman. So that can be quite the fun. So that's everything there, I think, to begin with. These icons here, these coloured cards, these are the cards. So that's how many spells I've got at the moment, which is none. That's how many objects I've got. That's followers and what would that be? Other cards. So I guess for the expansions maybe, yeah, or it could be purchase deck. I know, that's where your talisman would go. Yeah, okay, so, and what does this do? That tells us which alignment we are, so three evil and a good, no, he's neutral, isn't he? And this tells us if we've got a talisman. Player has no talisman, yeah. That's pretty cool. And what's this? Crown of Command. Ah, ah, there we go. Okay, Crown of Command. That's nicely done. If a character is on the Crown of Command and has no other character present, they must cast one command spell at the start of their turns. If a 1, 2, or 3 is rolled, the spell has no effect. On a 4, 5, or 6, all other characters lose one life. If a character is on the Crown of Command and there is another character present, they must encounter the other character instead of casting the command spell. So that is how you win the game in the base game. Excellent. Well, they've, they've done a very good job of explaining everything. I really like what they've done so far. And the graphics look lovely. I mean, that is the board. That, it's the same artwork. It looks fantastic. It's really good. Very impressed so far. Nice little atmospheric music. Lovely. And look at the mist. Look at the background. That's all cool. So I think what we'll do, though, is we'll have a quick look at the board. 
So we click on the square and we'll start where we are, all in the tavern, having a whale of a time. Me and my brother Stan and this dude here. Yeah, look, he's, he, he looks a bit, bit pasty, doesn't he? He hasn't been out in the sun. Okay, tavern. So here what you do is if you land on here, you roll a die and then you resolve it. Uh, generally in Talisman, the lower the dice, the worse it is. So one, two and three, not very good. Four, five and six, good. That's the general rule of thumb. If you're rolling two die, then it's normally one to six is not very good. And seven to 12 is pretty good. So let's click on to the next one. Draw one card, the planes, as I say, most of them are draw, draw one card, which is one of the adventure cards. And look at this guy, stuck in a cage. I wonder if he's still alive. Don't give him some water. It looks pretty hot there though. It's, the grass has been bleached out by the sun. I don't think he's going to last much longer. The woods, that's a little island, island you can get across. Yes, yeah, so if you do have an axe, if you buy an axe, you can actually use the axe also to, to uh, build a raft. I think it's in the woods, not in the forest. I think it's in the woods. You can then build across to the storm, into the middle region. And the plains, look at that, oh, off to the city. Draw one card, draw one card for the hills. Draw one card. And here we are at the city. And you can visit the enchantress, you can do various things. You can visit the doctor, you can visit the alchemist. So visiting the enchantress is always a dangerous thing because, as I say, one, two, three, not very good. Four, five, and six are good though. And you want to, I mean, really, to begin with, you want to be starting to power up and upgrade your strength and your craft so sometimes that's a good way of doing it because if you roll a four or a five then you've just didn't got a craft or a strength instantly the trouble with going to the entire test is that you become a slimy little toad if you roll a one never a good thing it's for three turns and basically you're reduced to strength one and craft one and you can't have any spells and you can't have any objects and you lose all your gold so you lose all your objects and they fall to the ground and somebody can come pick them up. So it's not very good and you're very vulnerable. You can only move one space at a time. So if there's a big dragon here and a, a big monster this side, then yeah, you could be in trouble. So that's what the city... Oh no, the visit the doctor, yes. Heal up to two lives at cost of one gold each. That's pretty standard. Visit the alchemist. Discard any number of objects you have and gain one gold for them. So you, if you want a bit of cash, you're fed up with... I don't know, your dagger or something. Fields, draw one card. In the woods, draw one card. The plains, <laughs> look at this guy, nice. Standing on a big boulder with, uh, with his cape, it must be quite windy. Either that or he's, he's made it out of starch, just to look manly, or, the, or it's, he's put wire in it. Yeah, maybe I could do that. Reminds me of Arthur's seat in Scotland. In the crags, here we go, the crags. So you, again, if you land on here, you roll one die, one to three, not so good. Four to five, no effect, and that's not brilliant. So the best one is six. You gain a strength. A barbarian leads you to safety. Fields draw one craft. So again, the corner that generally has things going on. And in this case, it's the chapel. And it's, yeah, the chapel is based on alignment. So if you're evil, you just lose a life. Nothing you can do about it. Neutral, heal up to the life value at the cost of one gold. That's pretty good. If you're good, you can either heal up your life for free or... You can pray by rolling a die, and again, five and six are the best to get there. Nice white horse in the hills, draw one card. Now this one is the central one. If you land there and you don't want to try and cross the river, you could you just draw one card as normal. If not, and you want to attack this big guy here, uh, strength nine, hopefully it's him and not him, because he's pretty weedy. I think he's trying to take that on. Anyway, this statue, I think it comes to life, and you have to fight it, strength nine. Now I've got strength four, but even then, and the way you fight is actually, and we'll go into this when we start getting into a fight, um, you, you roll one die, they roll one die, and you then add up your scores. So I would add my die roll to my strength. Or if it was a psychic battle, I would add that to my craft. And that's the result. And whoever's got the highest wins. If it's a draw, then it's a standoff. And obviously if you have a lower score, then you lose a life. Oh, unless it says something else, like you could lose an object or a follower, I guess. So that's how you get to the middle region that way. In the woods, look at that, that's pretty scary. Look at that skull. And yes, where the sorceress will start in the graveyard, obviously being evil. So again, it's the kind of reverse of the chapel. You lose a life if you're good. Neutral, it's all about fate, so you'd replenish that up to a cost of one gold each. Evil is all your fate for free, or you can pray. And again, five and six are the best to get. 
fields, draw one card. Here we are in the village. Nice little village. Look at that dude. He's off. He's probably just been to the pub. You can do various things here. Visit the blacksmith. You can buy stuff. As I say, there's armor and shields and axe. A helmet, shield and armor are good for defense. If you if you have lost a battle and you lose a life, you can actually roll the die and see if it protects you or not, which is pretty cool. Visit the healer. You can heal up cost of one gold. Visit the mystic and that will change monkey around and change your alignment or you can gain a craft or a spell so there's various ways you can upgrade and power up draw one card forest uh, again this is like the crags uh, but instead of gaining a strength at the end uh, a ranger guides you to safety and you gain a craft that's draw one card this one the ruins they that's draw two cards so it's a good way to to get more stuff basically hopefully you wouldn't get two monsters if you draw two monsters at the same time they fight if they're both strength or both craft they fight they unite and fight you so it's quite hard but hopefully you get two objects that's pretty cool draw one card in the field and we're back we're back here the other thing um i will say is let's just have a quick look Yes, so did I mention ah so that so yeah, so e you want to be traveling across from the outer region to the middle region, and as I say, you can fight the sentinel, you can go to the woods after you've bought an axe and build a raft, but my one being a pirate, I've obviously got connections, haven't I, so I roll a six and I can then just cross storm river because i've I've got a raft just hidden somewhere <laughs> right up my sleeve, big sleeve. So once you're there, you, there's various, and we can go through the different squares once one of us gets up there. I think that'd be quite cool. Uh, and the way then you get to the inner region is through this door here, this magical sealed door. It's a portal of power. And you roll a die to, or a couple of dice to test your skill, uh, to test your strength or your craft. So that's basically how to, to get there. So what we'll do is... There we are. I think we'll, we'll wrap this episode up because that was just a quick, hopefully quick, fairly quick. It wasn't quick, was it? But it was a nice overview of uh, how to play the game and just looking at all the, the cool features that um, the digital edition has offered. And I, so far, I'm very, very impressed. I mean, look at the detail. It's lovely. It's really nicely done. So very impressed so far. So yeah, so join us on episode two where we continue the quest for a talisman. Um, or maybe <laughs> maybe being a pirate, look at me, look, I, I might need a bit of help because um, I've got a little peg leg there, haven't I? And so is Stan. Maybe, maybe we could get some mobility scooters and use those. I don't know how well that, <laughs> that would work out. Or maybe, maybe I need a parrot. Maybe that's the quest that I'm after. Rather than a talisman, I need to need to get a parrot. That shall be my quest. So join me in episode two as the quest begins. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.